Okay, I wanted to talk to you guys about hoof boots, glue on hoof boots. Um, mainly because I haven't covered it yet. Uh, I did cover a little bit and uh, I thought you guys might be interested because that's the way that I'm fixing Gracie's feet. So I've got a few items that I want to talk about. I'm going to show you guys some footage of what um, it is like to uh, prep a hoof uh, and, and glue a boot onto a hoof. Um, but first I want to just quickly talk about the equipment that is used um, for said booting. So I've got um, I've got her boots here that I took off and so I want to also explain what happens when you use them for a while uh, if you can reuse them and stuff like that and uh, I also have another different size one here that I can show you um, to to give the idea that uh, hoof boots come in all sizes so I thought that might be interesting uh, we also have our of course our cadaver feet to help give a, an example of how these things are going to go on um, so hopefully that will be helpful if you have any questions just uh, Ask me below or give me a call or something like that because <laughs> uh, some of you do have instant access to me. So, um, hoof boots. Hoof boots are really, really handy. A really good tool if you've got hooves that are um, cracked or overly flared and, and as such the horse is probably going to be sore uh, because their feet, their soles are going to be flat. They're, uh, they're also really, really great for exactly what I'm using it for, which is what I suspect that Gracie had was a subsolar abscess, which blew out the back <clears throat> of the hoof. But unfortunately, the stuff that's in there, and it's probably been in there for a long time, is, was still in there. And by not protecting the bottom of the hoof and giving it a break, um, it just kept perpetuating. And the only way really to clear that up was to clean out the, uh, the bottom of the hoof and, uh, and, and, and make a bit of a cavity, essentially making a weaker point, but then covering it up. So that's the purpose of the boot in my case. Uh, another really good uh, case for hoof boots are horses that are kind of sore out on trails and rocks and hard ground, especially in the summertime. Uh, actually, it could be any time of year. And they, uh, or they may have to travel a lot. Endurance riders use hoof boots a lot. <clears throat> They're very, very uh, popular for that. And uh, essentially, it's like putting on shoes for us. So, you know, I call them running shoes most of the time because that's what they are. They're just protection between the bottom of the, the foot and the ground. And I haven't seen a horse ever not be more comfortable. Uh, there are different, different, you know, there are varying degrees of how much assistance you might need to give a horse. You might have to just do a boot. You might have to do a pad inside. You might have to do gel. Uh, there's all kinds of things to talk about, which I'll probably do in a part two. I will touch on it briefly because it pertains to Gracie, uh, hopefully tomorrow. So, uh, with with that in mind, with what hoof boots are used for, I'm using them to uh, fix Gracie, and it's doing very well. One of her feet is, uh, is fixed and uh, cleared up, and the second one is getting there. I can see the, uh, as they say, the end of the, the tunnel or the silver lining on a cloud. Um, the end is soon. So. Um, hoof boots, glue-on ones, are just the shell uh, of uh, ones that you can get that have uh, maybe a gaiter, like this. This is called a gaiter, but it's, it's like a, a neoprene sleeve, and um, it essentially attaches around the front of the hoof. I don't think I have a big enough hoof here for this, but if you were to put a hoof inside of here, uh, this, is, this would come around the front of the pastern and uh, uh, attach on like a pair of shoelaces, except it's just Velcro, so it's for kids. <laughs> um, anyways, they stay on quite well. And as you can see, this one is huge compared to, say, this one. <laughs> I'll put that up against the white. You can see uh, there are much bigger hoof boots out there, so that's that. Something to keep in mind. I've got the smallest ones. These are a size 00, zero for Gracie. She's got tiny little feet, um, and they fit perfect. So. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm protecting the bottom of her hoof uh, for the reasons I've already said, and they are perfect. I do not need to pad these things, but I will say that um, what I'm going to do for her last bit, because I'm going to um, just put one boot on, I don't need to do the other one, but I really want to protect this one area that she's got uh, that's still, I don't know if it's sensitive, she doesn't show sensitivity when I pick away at it, um, but I do want to just be extra careful because I plan to let her run free 
uh, from this point. <clears throat> um, but I do need to sort of fill that cavity so that sand or something else that gets inside of here, which it can a little bit through the back, uh, possibly, uh, doesn't go up into the weakened spot. So, um, hoof boots. That's the summary of hoof boots and why I'm using them with her. I want to talk about the materials and the tools a little bit as well. This is a glue gun. You can see um, it's like a caulking gun. If you know what that is, uh, for, for working on tile work or bathrooms or windows or something, anything that you want to seal up. And so what happens is uh, I've got a used um, container here that I use. I finished up this one. I have to buy a new one today, actually. Um, so this is a full one in the bag already. <clears throat> uh, still, I mean, not already. And so it's essentially an epoxy. And it's a two-part epoxy. Or urethane, it's a urethane glue, so, uh, but it has to react. So there's two chambers. One has the, uh, the material that the glue is, and the other is the hardener. And when you mix them together, and I'll show you really quickly here, uh, because they come with um, these applicator tips. And the applicator tips are, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Let's see. I don't think I can bring it close enough. I'll try to take a picture maybe, or you can check them out online as well. They're, they're a simple product. But they've got these swirly little things inside um, that separate out the two, but mix them at the same time. So they both have to travel down this swirly sort of deal, and they come out at the end mixed. So they've got that much space to start mixing up. Um, and very, very simple to use. Essentially, you just take the cap off. Let's see if I can get this one off. I can. And then when the cap is off, you take this bit and you just put it on, give it a little turn, and it uh, attaches on, uh, uh, it seals up. And then um, from that point forward, it goes on the gun and you just use it like a caulking gun. So you'll see that in the clip I'm going to show you on um, how to put a, a hoof boot on. So it's the basic tools of the trade of putting on hoof boots. Now the glue... The glue is, <laughs> especially in the summertime, it is very, very fast setting. You can get slower setting stuff, but I much prefer the fast setting stuff because I'm just going to work fast and get it over and done with anyways. And uh, some horses get a little bit uncomfortable with these things on, so they might try to move around or kick or something. So when I stick it on there, I'm going to shove it on, I'm going to bang it on, I'm going to put their foot down. Um, and if I can, I'm going to maybe either have them stand in it or I'll pick it up and I'll just have them hold still. And within 30 seconds to a minute or so, it's stuck. Uh, and it takes about four minutes to fully cure. Hard. Uh, and crunchy. So uh, the idea is that you have to apply it to both the boot and the hoof. Don't apply it to just one or the other. Because uh, there's a the idea is that when you apply it and it starts to cure a little bit, you want it to start to cure on the thing that you like the hoof or the inside of the boot, and so it starts to cure and attaches really really well. Then you shove it together, and then the outside parts um, they they glue themselves together really well, even if they've started to cure a little bit. You'll still squish them and break the outside barrier a little bit, um, and then. Uh, it creates this perfect seal. As, as, as you've seen in the video that I put up a little while ago uh, with Gracie running around, they don't come off if done properly. Um, so that's the very basics of putting on hoof boots, which you'll see in the video I will show you. So the other part that I also want to explain, and um, there are cases when you put on hoof boots that you're going to use some kind of pad or uh, some kind of medicated gel that might go in there. This stuff here is uh, called uh, Equipack Soft. It's an extra soft, and it's a pad material. It's clear. It doesn't really matter what color it is. It comes in other uh, uh, colors. I think there's pink, and then there's a green or blue one that has copper sulfate crystals in it a little bit, and uh, essentially that inhibits thrush or things from growing in there. Um, I'm not overly worried. Both times that I booted her, she's been terrific, so uh, she doesn't have that problem. I clean her up really well. And so this stuff here, uh, an extra soft material, is what I'm going to stuff around that area that I want to protect. And it is essentially just really soft um, silicone, in a sense. 
um, and it will attach quite nicely in there, I'm sure, and then help protect anything from going in there other than this soft gooey material. Now this stuff isn't really used to make a pad. You want to, you would put this underneath, um, you put this on the hoof and then a pad or then a boot or something like that because it's not going to put up with much trouble <laughs> or uh, uh, friction and stuff like that, it'll just wear off. I actually expect it to be disconnected when I take off the boot uh, due to the moisture of the hoof. So that leads me, it's a good segue into the preparation of the hoof. And um, I can't stress enough how important it is that the hoof, in this case this is a cadaver, so obviously it is, must be very, very dry, very, very clean. You do not want to get uh, even the, the oils of your fingers on here. Uh, fly spray, all kinds of things that could uh, dust, you know, uh, that could introduce some kind of barrier between your uh, your glue and uh, you know the 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 hoof or the boot. So even the inside of the hoof boot, you really, really, really need to clean out and make sure that it is free of oils and other materials and dust and stuff like that. Very, very important. <clears throat> so. When you've got that done, then it's a matter of, actually that's a, let's see, that's a zero zero, that's a zero zero point five, just a slightly bigger one, this one might fit. Um, when that's done and you glued, so you take one of these applicator tools, so just, we'll just pretend that we're gluing, I'll show you guys a couple of videos here, um, but you're going to glue the, um, as, as in the middle as you can really. You don't want to glue down really far because the last thing you want to do is get glue on the sole. When you get glue on the sole, it's like having a rock in your shoe. It's very uncomfortable. You can completely lame a horse up if that happens. Um, and they won't walk around at all. They'll just be standing there going, ouch, it really, really hurts. So by getting all the glue up sort of in the middle area here and, and, and making sure you make a good solid uh, squiggly bead, so no missing gaps, so no squiggly bead here, no squiggly bead then here, and then you really want to be really consistent if you can, um, but making sure that it is fully covered on there. Then on the inside of the hoof boot, you can do again um, near the top area here, and just kind of go along and make sure that it's really solid, and all the way around to the back. Um, on the hoof itself, you really want to be careful to come all the way around. It absolutely does no good to get it on the frog, it comes right off, but you can. Try not to get it on the hairline and stuff. I mean, it, it just comes off. Usually the, the skin and whatnot is a little bit wet. This stuff does not stick, this does not stick to things that are wet. If they're wet, it'd be a matter of time for it just pops right off. So, dry, clean, non-oily, 100% for these things. And that pretty much summarizes <laughs> the basics of putting on hoof boots. So, I'm going to roll a couple of clips um, on, uh, on, on what I did to prep her feet. So actually I actually have some notes, so I'm just going to quickly read these. Um, talking about, I'll talk, or I'll, I'll probably um, put some captions down below so you can see them. But I, I essentially do some rasping. For drying out, you can use a, a very light butane torch. Um, if you're going to use that, you don't leave it on and try to dry it out. Do a lot of different passes. Uh, the way I dry them out, I don't have a tool. I'm not very comfortable with that idea. Uh, I don't think horses really do very well with, you know, kind of sound. Um, so what I ended up using was methyl hydrate, which is 99.9% uh, .9 alcohol. And when you place that on objects, it dehydrates them quite quickly. So by wiping that down a few times, you can really start to pull the moisture out of the hoof and then apply it from there. So I think that's a good chemical uh, resolution. You can also use a hair dryer or a heat gun, uh, but I can't find my heat gun, so kids used it. And now it's gone. Methyl hydrate it is. So uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning the hoof and everything after that, making sure it's solid clean, because uh, any moisture will, will or kill it off. After you've done the prep, um, you need to think about uh, whether or not you're going to use something medicated on the bottom or basic pad or uh, uh, nothing. So there's that. And then prep otherwise, um, gloves. Basic, you know, blue, white, whatever, these, these vinyl gloves. And put on two or three pairs at a time. Uh, this, this glue <laughs> It's terrible. It sticks to everything and you can't get it off. You get it on your gloves, you're, you're, you're screwed, <laughs> essentially. And so what you have to do is you, you take off a pair 
or take off one, whichever one got dirty. Take it off and then you still got one or two pairs underneath to protect your hands. You don't want this stuff on your hands. Uh, unless your hands are wet, they don't really matter, but you really just don't want it on your hands. Um, thinking about uh, when you're gluing it, you have to consider the temperature outside. If it's really warm, it's going to cure much faster. You better be quick. If it's cooler, it'll take a little longer, but you still have to be kind of quick about it. I talked about coverage and definitely don't get it on. Can't uh, stress it enough. The bottom of the hoof. That is a bad idea. Hurts the horse. Um, and yes, I always I already talked about uh, making sure to get it all the way to the back of the hoof and um, seal the top. So last thing I guess I'll just quickly cover because it's in my notes, so it seems like a good thing to talk about as well, is that you don't want to leave these things on for too long. Um, recommended time is anywhere between 10 days and two weeks or so. Um, I suppose if you have something medicated in there, you could probably leave it on a little bit longer, say even up to a month. Um, but if doing rehab, there's a lot of times where you're going to want to take it off, inspect, trim, because the, the hoof is growing down uh, at the same time. So the boot is already starting to not fit within a week to two weeks because uh, the hoof is growing down. So it's going to try to grow this thing slowly off of its foot. Um, so a solid trim beforehand is a really good idea as well. But if you leave it on for a month, after a month, I mean, things are going to start looking a little bit funny. Now, if you do use these things, um, you know, more than once or twice or something like that, pretty soon you're going to have damage. You're going to see, uh, you know, the, the, the toe is going to be missing, the bottom is going to be really worn out. Um, there's going to be, uh, you know, if you, if you, when you go to take the glue off, you might have trouble taking it off so you might rip it and stuff so they do have a short relatively short life expectancy but well worth the um, money in my mind about 30 bucks a piece or so I think and um, so in that regard leaving it for 10 10 days two weeks or something like that you then take it off you can do another evaluation do you need to continue to booting the the horse or or can you leave it for a little bit and see how it goes um, a lot of cases uh, can go, you can go almost back to back, I try not to go back to back, I try to leave a few days in between, let things kind of air out, dry out, um, you know, uh, give it a trim, take, let, it, let it be for a bit, then take a look again, give it another trim if need be, uh, just to sort of see how things are going, and then reboot if you need to, if not, you're done. Um, so you can go back to back for quite a while, months, um, and it will allow... The biggest thing that it allows for many, many horses is the growth, the extra growth that the bottom of the hoof needs. Most horses that are sore don't have soles that are sort of hard or thick enough or callous enough that they can really put up with a lot of things. Um, but it could also be a frog problem, so that's a separate issue altogether. But boots are really going to help the ones that have thin soles, like this hoof here is a great example. Um, it's got almost no, no sole to it. Um, no, no thickness whatsoever. Putting your fingers in between here, you can tell the depth um, or thickness of it. I mean, it's probably one or two millimeters. It's very, very thin. If I push hard enough, I'd probably break through. So those kinds of horses that need to grow sole down and don't need it worn off anymore by just traveling around, it can be very, very beneficial for it. So hopefully that has been helpful. I know it's a big pile of information all at once. I will do another part talking a little bit more about this process, padding, and and, uh, and whatnot, and, and more other different types of cases that I can think of. Uh, but for now, if you have any questions, let me know below. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the video talking about, or showing you guys um, how I go about booting, or how I went about booting Gracie, because I did get some okay video of that. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys again next time. Let's get gluing.
Tofu. It's hard to get off. <clears throat> All right. So let's hopefully this works. Good girl. Let's see what we got. Good girl. Thank you. 
Put your foot down. Yeah, that'll do it, too. Why do you have an extra? I know, I know. Hey, stop, relax. I know, it's weird. Good girl. <laughs> 